Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to create an end-to-end -end ingestion process using Delta Light Table. I will be using all the features which I discussed in my previous videos. The features related to data sets like how many different type of data sets are available in Delta Light Table. We will talk about CDC, okay, like how to perform SCD1 or SCD2, how we will do it or how we can use in this end-to-end -end process. We will also use append flow to merge the data from two tables to one table. We will also use expectations, okay, to perform data quality checks. And then we'll try to ingest the data from source to silver layer, okay. I'll just give you a high level understanding what I'm gonna do. So I have few files present in ADLS, okay, with the name of circuits, okay. And I have created one Unity catalog. Now I, I linked this ADLS and Unity catalog with the help of volumes. Okay, and I'll be using these volumes inside the notebook to access these source files. Okay, by reading the source file with the help of auto loader, I will be creating my branch table. Okay, once the table is done, I will add few columns based on the requirement and then I will move this data to one of the stage table. Okay, let's say stage silver, something like that. Okay, where I will be doing data quality check or some transformation if needed. We will see how much we can cover in this video. And then we will use a CD feature. Okay, apply changes basically. Apply changes. Sorry, I forgot to mention here. Apply changes. If you don't know any of these features, I will recommend you to go and check the previous video. So I'll use apply changes to perform STD1 or STD2. We'll see. Okay. Or mostly STD1 for the timing. Once it is done, once the silver silver table will be done, right, using STD, I will also create another table, error record table where I will be kind of storing the error records, okay. And when I say error records means the failure records because of the data quality, right. So if there are any null values for a specific column, the one which I am checking, if there are null values, I will be storing it, okay. So that's how I will be uh, creating this notebook. So initially this notebook will be entirely hard coded. Then maybe in the next video, what I will do, I will slowly start making it in a dynamic fashion. Okay. I'll, I'll use some uh, variables or components, right. To make it more generic. Okay. Or more reusable, I can say. Okay. And then we will try to drive this notebook via metadata. Okay. So we'll see these few things in the next video, but then let's try to cover whatever we can cover in this video. I have some code already written. Let me switch over to the Databricks workspace. Okay. And uh, I already created one pipeline for this process. Okay. We will see it. But as of now, just take a look. I'll, I'll explain each and every command cell what I'm going to write. Okay. And just to save some time, I have already written some of the code so i'll be uh, using that part also okay so let's let's just quickly get started then so first of all okay sorry the notebook was taking some time to open okay so the first cell as you can see we are adding all the required libraries okay in the second one, I am creating a schema, schema for the CSV file, which I'm going to read from my uh, ADLS using Unity catalog, using volumes. And then if you see here, I have some cloud options. 
So if you are not familiar with the cloud thing, right, you can think of streaming part, okay, or a streaming uh, job where we can use auto loader. So wherever you see this cloud option, mostly we are in 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 the ingestion process, right? I'm talking about the database ingestion process. If you are treating any files as a cloud files, then you are explicitly using the auto loader. That's what it means. Okay. Auto loader is like a cloud file. Okay. Whenever we read the files, it will treat the files as a cloud file. So if you don't know much about it, I would recommend you to watch one of the videos related to auto loader. I will try to drop the link on I button. Okay. And then once you have these things ready, start creating your branch table. Okay. This is the branch table, DLP name. I have explained it how exactly we can create the name of the table or what are the different ways why we can create it okay in the previous videos so i am defining the table here let's say branch table circuit and then i'm saying read the cloud files not csv or not anything right the cloud files as a because inside cloud files here when i say cloud files it means i'm using auto loader and inside cloud files we can define the format so i'm saying use csv Okay, and uh, header equal to true because my files have headers, but I will be explicitly adding the schema. And then the volume path where exactly my files are present. And then I'm adding one column file process date in this particular format just to save the time or load the time. I mean, just to save the loaded uh, date and time form. Okay. So that we can track at what time the data got processed in the branch layer. Now, if you see in this cell, I am creating the checks, the data quality checks. And what I'm trying to say here is create a dictionary. Okay. It's a list of dictionary basically where we are saying that check the values in circuit and name column. If they are not null, okay, it should be not null basically. That's what we are trying to say. Okay. They should be not null. And then we are creating the DQ rules. Okay, using this particular dictionary. You can check my previous videos how exactly we are doing it. Okay. But once these checks are defined, they are just defined till now. We are not using it till now. Okay. We are just defined it. To use it, we need a table. Okay. And this is our table, the stage table. Now on this table, I am using this checks. So if you see here, I'm saying expect all. Okay, so there are three different ways by which we can use expectations, expect all, or drop, expect all, or fail, or expect all, right? Something like that. We have discussed about it this also, okay, in my previous videos of DLT. So here I'm just saying don't drop any records. I'm not saying to fail my pattern. I'm just saying let's add a column with a value if it is true or false based on the checks. If the value is null or not null. Right? So if it is not null, give it true. If it is null, it will make it false. Okay? That's how it works. Now, once this table is done, right? We have the records now with true and false. So what I'll do, I'll filter it out. That's what we are doing it here, right? Then after getting the record, the null or record, I am creating a streaming table silver load. Okay, the earlier one was the stage. Now it's the actual silver load where we are using SCD1. If you see here, I have set SCD1 stored as SCD type 1. You can define two as well. The syntax will vary. Okay. And then for the keys, I'm using circuit ID. Our target is obviously the silver table, and source is obviously the stage table, right? The one which we are creating. And I'm saying sequence it by file process state. Okay. And then once we have the actual silver load, we will try to get the error records as well. The one which has null values, right? So for the null values, for the null values, the DQ check should be false, right? So that it will have the null values. Now our notebook is ready. Okay. So DQ here is false means the error record. DQ true means the correct record, right? And then this is the pipeline, right? Where I have already given the path. Okay. I have given one ingestion flow schema where the table will be stored and that's it. We have some pressure policies and everything. Let me go to the delta live table. 
and if i okay let me open this don't worry about the previous executions i was trying something let me do a full refresh load so that it will load the data from fresh and if you see in the in this folder right we have couple of files let me delete few files by the time it will start oh it has the resources already yeah let let's see how it works okay i have deleted only kept one file we can see what is the data in this particular file i right. read so circuit 2 so in circuit 2 if you see i have 77 records so we should see 77 records inside it okay let's see now let me go to the pipeline yes So if you see in the bronze, we have already 77 records. In silver, we have in error record we have zero because none of them is zero. None of them has null. So now what I'll do, I'll upload one file which has some null records. I think 33. Let's do it. And since it is done, I'll just restart again. So this time I'll not do the full, full refresh. I'll just simply set start it. So it will start from the next file, right? That's how auto loader works. It will make sure it will process each file at once only. Okay. At one time only, not again and again. So now once it will start, it will just read the next file like the 33, circuit 33, which has these two records, right? And out of which one has null values. So let's see how it works. So if you see bronze load started and two records are in the bronze because in the bronze we are not doing anything. In error we have one, in stage we have one, right? Because we filtered out the null values. And then this is silver load circuit, which is the final table. Okay, the cluster is terminated, otherwise I, I would have shown you like what is the data in the final table. But it removed the null record, that's it. That's the main point. Okay. So this is how you can create your ingestion process. Okay. Now in the next video, I will show you what all things you can add it in it and how you can make it more generic so that you can leverage the same notebook for multiple similar type of source systems or source data. Okay. So I hope this video will be helpful for you guys. Thank you. Thanks for watching the video.